Hello everybody and welcome back to Outcast Studios. I hope you all had a good day. Mine has been terrible, but yes, we are back and we are playing some Starsec now. Since last episode, you might be able to tell that things have gotten a little wacky around here. They might have gotten a little crazy, a little kooky even. You could say we have gone completely bananas. And by that I mean I've just put my astral relays back in position. I stored these in a chest a while ago, back before I built this whole thing. And I apparently just forgot to put them back down. So I've done that now. I've, uh, I've put down all of my astral relays. And thankfully, they actually all reach the uh, the center um, altar. That's it. Uh, totally didn't forget the name or anything. Uh, shut up. But yes, because they all reach the center altar when it reaches nighttime, this thing is practically full now. Um, well, in terms of starlight. But I also crafted myself, after last episode, a new Fossic Resonator. Now, this one is the step up from our old one because it allows us to swap between Fossic Resonation Icosic Resonation and Domic Resonation. Now, I believe we haven't actually touched on that last one just yet, so we don't really have a reason to swap over to that right uh, right away. But all this does, if you remember for Whoa, that's weird. If you remember from the last time we used this, um, whenever it's nighttime, all this does is shows us the areas around us that have really high fossic concentrations. And for those that have forgotten, uh, basically if you put these altars in areas with high fossic concentration, it basically means this fills up more, uh, even though the uh, moonlight is essentially the same level. It, it's just like a a natural boosting area, you know? But that's not all in between episodes. I also finally managed to craft us some nocturnal powder. I'll get, I'll get onto that in a second. And before that, I actually made us an illumination wand. Now, these are all things considered pretty cheap. The hardest thing was the shifting star just because it required some stardust, but we have plenty of that to spare in the chests uh, over there, or if not the ones over there, I, th I think it was the ones down there. Um, but it's very cheap, and to change color, all you had to do was put a die next to it. And the reason I crafted this was so we could add these magic little uh, flare lights all around our base. You see, they're on top of the pillars, they're on top of these. We also have some on top of here, uh, but for rendering purposes, so that it doesn't lag out our game, they only actually appear when you get in close proximity to them. So, for example, there's one over there, but it won't show up until I'm practically on top of it, just like that. Now, in between sessions, I did also do some research on the Astral Sorcery mod, just to get myself back up to scratch with this thing since it has been a while since we really did anything uh, from the book. Last session doesn't really count. And I found out that the reason why I'm sort of struggling to figure out what order to do things in is because this mod doesn't actually have like a hard progression system. It very much lets you go at your own pace and do whatever you want, which for, you know, uh, regular players would be fine, but because I'm trying to cover everything in here, it does lead me to feel a little lost from time to time. For example, we've made uh, channeling things, we've looked at flares, uh, but we haven't even like thought about using construction ones yet, which are like, um, well, construction ones. They let you do a bunch of different stuff, like for example, this one lets you build in a 5x5 five five area, and uh, this one here, oh, this is a traversal one, this is like a uh, a free ender pearl sort of thing. You use it and it teleports you around. And then the, this this one here, like it says, you can just like form a line towards you by using it uh, with whichever block you so wish. Um, now stuff like that, we could craft just to show off, but because we're playing a mod pack, there's not really much use for crafting one of those when I could just craft one of these instead, one of these ones here. So either the diamond wand or the infinity wand, which would actually be very easy because all it would require is a nether star and sticks and I mean you know we have an abundance of those. So that's why I was sort of struggling to figure out what order to go in. Now in the last episode we did sort of organize over on these parts here the different tiers of uh, sort of crafting altar. Like you see over here we have the tier 2, over here we have the tier 1, this was meant to be the tier 3, and then this would be the tier 4. Obviously this is currently tier 3, but that would get moved over there once we've built the tier 4. Uh, but obviously we couldn't really do much with this first one because we didn't have our own collector crystal. Now I was assuming that it was really hard to build collector crystals, but after looking through a bunch of tutorials, it's really not. So if we just figure out which one it's in, it's not discovery, it's not a I think it's constellation. Yeah, here we go. You can craft a collector crystal just on its own using resonating gems, which we do have, uh, some stardust, which we have, and some illumination powder, which again 
we have. And rock crystals, we can just go out and find some whenever it hits nighttime. So, what I'm thinking is we craft ourselves a collector crystal, we attune it to the same one that's underground there, just for just for the sake of keeping things thematical, I guess? I don't know, I really don't know how the attunement works just yet, so I'd feel a lot more comfortable attuning my new one to the same thing as this, which is Evoriso. Each one, like each attunement, has their own special unique thing that comes along with it. I have no idea what Evoriso's is, but it's the one we've used down here, so it's the one I'd feel most comfortable putting up there. But before any of that, obviously, we did craft the Nocturnal Powder for a reason. So, I say we continue on with the plan that we had from the last session, which was to use the Nocturnal Powder to make ourselves the Celestial Gateway down here. Now, for this, we do need a Rock Crystal anyway, so I'd say we should go hunting for these. However, we do have all of these from the last time we went mining for Rock Crystals. I don't remember going mining for these, but apparently I just kept them down here for some reason, and then obviously I've tidied it up since then. But I just didn't use them, so let's grab... Which one of these would be the worst? Like, which one can we just sacrifice? Size 3, Shape 2, Size 3, Shape 2, Size 3, Purity 2... Size 1, Shape 1, Ritual Effect 1, Focus Vicio. Uh, not understanding, collection rate. Let's just go with one of these, since we have duplicates. So, if you remember, it's Nocturnal Powder at the top, then it's a Rock Crystal in the middle. After that, we need glass lenses on either side. Now, I think I used up the last of my glass lenses setting up my astral relays, but let's just quickly check the chests to make sure. Nope, we have an abundance, so let's take two of these. There we go, put one there, one there, and then... Then it's the stardust, the gold, and the ruined marble, so let's quickly check the chests for those. Okay, well, we've certainly got enough stardust, but unfortunately, just looking through the chests there, we don't have any ruined marble or gold in them. So let's just drop the Stardust to begin with, which is there and there, I believe. Uh, nope, never mind. It is the triangle pattern. So one there, one there, and one there. Thankfully, we have the gold with us in this backpack. So we can just take a block of that and um, not sort of have to worry about running out. But I don't think we have any ruined marble. We have marble bricks and we have regular marble and I've seen chiseled marble uh, but sadly I think we just don't have the ruined stuff so we might have to craft some of that very quickly because yes before you get all sake I do remember that you can in fact craft ruined marble it's just been that long that I've genuinely forgotten how uh, so let's just look at the recipe uh, ruined marble it is chiseled marble and two regular marble okay we can do that that's that's easy enough there we go so that makes chiseled and then we stick chiseled there and then we put marble on either side and now we have ruined marble so let's just grab that really quickly there we go swap it out for the philosopher's stone put one here and here and there we go a slightly buggy texture wise uh celestial gateway so let's give it a bippity boppity booyah check out the particle effects. Oh, hello, you shouldn't be able to be here. And there we have it, one celestial gateway. Now, uh, funny thing about these, you need two for them to work, so we need to craft another one of those. Thankfully, a very easy task since the moon isn't exactly going anywhere, uh, but just bear with me while I do that. And there we go, give us that, give us a bippity boppity booyah. And we should be sorted. Brilliant. Oh, I love the way that gets outlined. Yoink. Right then, so, as I mentioned before, this thing obviously isn't going to work while it doesn't have access to the starlight. And unfortunately, there's no real way of changing that. Uh, because even if it was just the source block, I can't exactly just poke a hole through the ceiling uh, without it um, breaking through the structure on top, the, the altar up here because it's directly in line. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to build the first one over here. So as we all know, this is the entrance to the to the, the college. You come up here and you walk in and this is the first thing you see. Now, I'm still debating if I should put the Celestial Gateway there or if I should put it here. Part of me thinks I should put it there and turn these walls into like a notice board sort of thing like, oh, welcome to the college, blah, 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 blah. Because just aesthetically, I think it'd fit more down here. You know what? I just completely talked myself out of putting it up here. Let's just put it down here. So obviously it's got to be in line, but not in line with the pillars. 
It's going to be in line with the actual building. So I think that is the perfect place for it. Now, if we hit it with a resonating wand, it should give us, there we go, the outline of what we need. So if we just mine these up very quickly. Now, these are red because they're wrong, but those in the center are black, and I'm not sure if that's also because they're wrong. Or if it's purely, or if it's because I've got it right by chance. Okay, I did get it wrong. It's just showing up as black because the actual block is black, and that can't overpower the red. So let's just uh, vein mine this out. That's not what I ha had in mind. I'm not sure why that classified. That is very irritating. Right then. So rune marble, that goes in the corners, if I remember correctly. Let's let's put this back. Hold on. Okay, I guess it's just being useless on purpose. Right, well, at the very least, we know that the center square is made of sooty marble, so we can fill this in uh, prim prematurely, primarily, firstly. I don't know, pick a word you like and run with it. There we go. So now we've got to turn this whole part here into sooty marble. There we go. It's not coming up as incorrect. So we're doing a good job. Now, it's the edges that were ruined. There we go. Put one there, one there, craft more, one there, and then put one there. And then those around the edge, I believe they're not chiseled marble. They're, um, engraved marble, if that's the name of them. Oh, no, sorry. They're marble arches, which we can just craft in our inventories. There we go. I don't think 10's going to be enough, but we uh, we can just make some more. Yeah, we, we actually needed 20. Oh, well, that is enough for the rest of the block. And there's a second layer that I forgot about. Woo! Okay. Uh, it's not, that's not chiseled marble, though, is it? Unless it's showing the wrong texture. No, nope, that's not chiseled marble. What are you? Oh, engraved marble. Right, okay. So engraved marble is just marble in a plus shape. That we can do. Never mind, we're missing some basic marble. Oh my god, okay. Uno momento, por favore. I've got to get some marble. Of all things to run out of, just regular old marble. There we go. Thankfully we had some in the chests. Yeah, we definitely don't need 20, but... Why not? Okay, and as you can see, the effect already already sort of applied itself there. Um, but the structure is complete, as you can see from the particle effects. Uh, now, you can name these gateways, and I am probably going to name it later, but for now, I just want to show you. If I step inside, it creates this sort of cool dome effect, this starlight dome effect. And um, sadly, it doesn't block out the floor. But the way this works is if there are any active gates currently in the world... Uh, they will appear as these mini sort of stars, and you can click on them, and it acts like a wormhole, and it takes you to them. Now, I could just sit here and explain it with words, or I could show you. Now, obviously, for now, the gateway in the center is kind of done for. Uh, it is just straight up not viable at the moment, and there's nothing I can do to change that without using commands. So I'm not going to use this one. Instead, even if it just ends up being temporary, I kind of want to see what happens if I install a starlight or celestial gateway or whatever you want to call it into Guy's view. So for now, really, they're, they're, we already have that waystone, so this kind of defeats the purpose of that. But I feel like it'd be kind of cool to have one out here. So let's start digging, I guess. And now we put down the gateway, just like so. And then if we hit it with the wand, we can see what we need to change on the outside. Bam, bam, bing, bong. And marble arches around the edge. Unfortunately, I do believe we're about to run out of these, so very quickly. Or not quickly, because it decided to crash on me again. I'm going to end my life. And we're back. And as I was saying, we can take advantage of our new transmutation table. We can learn ourselves the marble arch, and then we can just pull out a bunch of it, like as much as we could possibly need, like 64 of it, you know? Then we can fly back on up to the surface, and we can fill in the holes. Of course, where would we be without, you know, the engraved marble on the corners? I mean, you can't forget that. That'd just be silly. And there we go. We now have ourselves the celestial gateway, and would you look at that yellow star right there? So, if we were to step on the celestial gateway now, we were to hover over that star and right click and hold we go through the wormhole and we end up back in our crayer now that would be how it would work if we wanted to get underground however like i mentioned no starlight so i still don't quite have a fix for what we could do with that 
my only idea would be to maybe start adding some floating smaller islands that we could use as individual classrooms, but that seems like a very big project. So for now, I think we're just gonna stick to the hole in the ground. Either way, now that we have a form of the Celestial Gateway set up, hold on, let me make sure you can see it. There we go, now you can see it. Either way, now that we have a form of that set up, on to the next thing. Yes, that's right, we're speedrunning this, ladies and gentlemen. We have been out of the game for far too long. It is time to jump back into it. So, in order to make the collector crystal, we have to grab some illumination powder, some stardust, and some resonating gems, as well as the, you know, rock crystal. However, this isn't just any rock crystal that we need. It's an attuned rock crystal. And now to attune it, this is where our previous work with the, uh, what is it called? What is it called? Where is it? The attunement altar comes into play. You see, the attunement altar, this thing that we set up not too long ago, uh, but then didn't use, is what we use to give those crystals their specific attunements. Remember how the one down there is attuned to Evoriso? This is how we do that. So what we've got to do before any of that is we've got to set ourselves up an attunement chamber. And what... Oh yeah, that was upstairs. I thought a witch started attacking me then. And what better place to set up that attunement chamber than in the center of this chamber right here. Now, I do want to make sure that this is actually in the center of the room, so give me a second. I don't think it is. Right, this is 23 blocks wide, so it's most certainly not in the center. So I think the center is actually this one here. Yes, indeedy. So this one here is actually the center. So if we just pick this up really quick and then pop it down here. There we go. And we know that's the center because it's lined up with the doorway. Right then, so time to set up the actual uh, attunement altar. So for this, we're going to need a very big space. We're going to need to clear out a lot of this. Thankfully, we do have most of the resources already in our inventory. This is going to be a piece of cake. There we go. That's the outside ones done. Now, this is my favorite part. We can do the inside ones. So I was kind of chugging a bit, though, which is concerning. Right then, so let's check what we need along the outside. It is the marble arches. Now, we do still have quite a few of these. So let's get these in place. There we go. Although we haven't quite finished, we do still need um we we do still need to get a few more of these, so bear with me while I grab those. You know, I really should craft myself a warp stone. This would be infinitely more helpful. Let me see if I can grab one of these actually. No, we don't have any ender pearls or emeralds in there. Hopefully we can come across some sooner rather than later so that we can just drop them into the transmutation tablet, but until that time comes. Let's just grab ourselves some more of those uh, archers. Ooh, we do have emeralds, actually. We left them in the chest down here, and we have Eyes of Ender. I'm not sure if these can be backwards crafted or not, but it would be really helpful if they could be. No, they can't, sadly, uh, which is a really big shame because they're... Re it's really hard to come by ender pearls. Ooh, nebulous heart. Ooh, wait, hang on, I can craft them with a philosopher's stone. I'm an idiot. Let's do that now. Why can't I take them out of the computer? What's going on? Why can't I take anything out of the computer? What the hell? Excuse me? It won't even let me- Oh, great. Is the server crashing? Is that it? Great, thanks. Love it when that happens. And we take those nine iron, and then we put them in a pattern like this. There we go. And then we take our philosopher's stone, just like that. We got ourselves an ender pearl. And now from there, all we have to do, drop it in here, drop it in here. Then we can just pull out one, two, three, four of these because I think it's only four that we need. No, in fact, we don't even need four, we just need one, so I can just do this. And then it's four ender pearls that we need. There we go, take those, and then the last thing was purple dye, which we have in this chest over here. Oh, would you look at that, it appears I'm starving to death, whoopsie. There we go, right then, so now all we have to do, grab the Philosopher's Stone, do this, and there we go, we have ourselves a Warp Stone. And now, the reason I wanted to craft so desperately one of these is because it allows me to do this. I can just, I can go to any of my, any of my waypoints from literally anywhere. Uh, it does have a charge, th oh, it has a charge? Ah, I didn't know it had a charge. Oh, well, you can't win them all. What we can do, however, is finish off the building down here, just like so. Let's uh, drop one of these in there. There we go. And then let's just continue to place these arches along here. Right, then the next block up that it needs is the sooty marble. Now, I do have a bit of a question. If I were to just shift right-click this... No, I thought it might have done it by itself. Never mind. 
Okay, let's just, let's start placing this stuff. I just did the math. The warp stone takes exactly five minutes to recharge, so it's not exactly a easy get out of jail free card option. Is that an eclipse? Are we having an eclipse? That's kind of, that's kind of cool. Four and five. Brilliant. Now all we have to do is add in the corner pillars, which is a lot easier than filling in black sooty marble in the dark. There we go. Now we have to actually put the pillars on top, which is something that I wasn't prepared for because I don't remember where I put them. I found one. One's enough. Boom, ba ba da ba boom, pal. And then these two extra. Oh wait, there's another layer. And we are finished setting up the attunement altar now. Here's the challenge. I don't know how to use this. Now, from the looks of it, all I'd have to do is put a collector crystal here. However, I know I also have to draw a pattern for the type of constellation that I want to attune the crystal to. So let's just quickly have a look in this here tome. Hey gamers, I've got some bad news. So um, as you can see, it's sparkling, right? It's, it's alive, it's a working altar. Well, guess who decided that it would be a good idea to build a base that's primarily underground when he was working on a mod that required access to the sky. This guy right here. So, um, there's a reason it wasn't sparkling. That's because it needs access to the sky in order to function. So now it's not just the, uh, the celestial gateway that would require the command to work, but it was this as well. Basically, if I wanted any of this to work, I would have to enable as ignore skylight check true. Which, as you can see, I have. And, um, at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with that. There are ways I could work around it by rebuilding the entire base so that it, um, all was out in the open. But, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place here, I'm gonna be honest. On the one hand, I hate the idea of having to completely redesign the base because I really like the way this base looks. And I put a lot of time into it. But on the other hand, if I want to continue using it, I've got to change the way the game works. I've got to use the command. I've got to use the command, guys. I've got to use the command, and I really don't want to use the command. So, I'll leave this one up to a vote for now. We can either keep the base, this really sexy base that I've designed, that took us entire episodes to build, um, and just have to use the command to allow things to work underground, or I could redesign this entire place add a bunch of floating islands and have all of my stuff outside where the sky can see it. I'm gonna leave this one up to you because I hate the idea of doing both of them. I hate one a little less, but I don't want to do it. So yeah, I suppose for now, your choice. Unfortunately, it appears that that's not the only issue that we've come across today either. You see, I am very stupid. And because of that, the whole thing that we've been working on for the entire episode is in fact the wrong thing. It's not the thing designed to attune rock crystals, that's the wrong side. It's not the thing designed to attune rock crystals, oh no. The altar we've built is designed to attune us. Yeah, in all the mod 6 slash Anadonia, which is, you know, technically the root pack that we're playing, uh, Astral Sorcery doesn't really have that big of a... Do you mind? It doesn't really have that big of a reason to exist. I mean, there's not much in here that you can do that's broken. Most of that stuff comes from different mods. The one thing you'll always want Astral Sorcery for in this pack is self-attunement. You see, if we go into the Astral Tome and we go to Constellations and we click on each of these, they actually tell you what they do. For example, Vicio, if you attune yourself to that, it makes you faster. If you, uh, oops, not that. If you attune yourself to Avatas, it makes you, I don't know, things grow better? I don't know what that does to yourself. Evarisho makes you lucky, I think. I. Hold on, let me actually just pull up Google, because God knows this book is useless. Okay, well, good news, the internet as a whole is completely useless, and so is the book. So we are completely blind with this. Great. I love it when, you know, not even the mod creator writes an actual, you know, tutorial on how to do anything. That, that's brilliant. Uh, but all I did manage to find out is that what we're going to do is we're going to attune ourselves, because at this point, why not, to Vicio, because apparently Vicio is the best choice when it comes to attuning yourself. How do I know this? Simple. 
it's the only one anyone has ever spoken about on the internet ever. You think I'm joking? Google uh, Astral Sorcery 1.16 uh, self-attunement help and then see if you can find anything. But the other thing I learned is that we don't just need this paper, we also need ourselves more of those relays. If I type in Astral Sorcery, we need to grab ourselves a load more of these Astral Relays. So let's go and make some. And there we go. Just, uh, just gonna wait for nightfall now. And by wait, I mean exploit the watches of flowing time that we have somewhere in these backpacks. And there we go. Let's just drop that in there. And because of our, uh, what are these called? Astral Relays. Uh, we should have enough starlight to already make these. So let's uh, bippity boppity boo on you. And there we go. 14 schmackaroos. Now, the last thing we've got to do is we've actually got to put this constellation paper in our other hand because now that it's nighttime, it's actually going to show us where to place these astral relays, okay? Because, I mean, at least if I can give credit for anything, it's that the mod maker knows it would be nearly impossible to plan this thing out on your own. Either way, with those in place, I believe the last thing we have to do is give them uh, focuses. So if we take this out of our hand now, and we grab the glass lenses, if we put one here, one here, one here, 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 and last one here, Huh. I really thought that was going to work. What did I do wrong? Oh boy. Ah, no, so it's nothing I did wrong. I literally just have to wait for this constellation to be in the sky. Now, if we look at the paper, this appears at a nearly full moon, a half moon, a crescent moon, no moon, or, you know, the reverse crescent moon. So what we've got to do is we've actually got to go outside. Shocking, I know. And look at that moon. Do you see how that's not one of the ones that it'll work? Actually, wait, hang on, that is supposed to be one of the ones it works on. What? Whatever. But you see how the moon exists, right? And there's constellations in the sky, but it's not all of them. And that's because these constellations only appear on this moon. So what we've got to do is we've got to grab ourselves the Watch of Flowing Time and wait for the right constellation to appear in the sky. So let's... Well, let's, let's just wait. And there we go. Wait, what? Wait, no, it, it just lit up for a second. Why did it go away? It was working. Why did it go away? Wait, what? Why is it daytime? Did it seriously only light up for the last few seconds? That is ridiculous. We're going back. No, no, no. You're going back down. We're getting the moon back. Because what the hell is that? That's not the one we're after. That's not the one we're after. Hang on, doesn't this appear on a full moon? No, it doesn't. Oh, come on. Is it, is it, is it a random moon going back as well? That's ridiculous. Oh, for God's sake. Not tonight either. Surely that one's correct, right? This has to be the other side of the moon. I could just make a hammock. Uh, from the looks of it, nope, not tonight either. Even though that should 100% be tonight. Okay. Wait, is it eclipsing? Are we getting an eclipse? Oh, that's brilliant. It's a shame that it just didn't work the way we needed it to. Okay. Keep it going, son. Nearly there. Nearly there. Tonight. It's tonight, that one. That should have proctored into action. Come on. Why? I, you're singing, but I couldn't see you lit up. What? Oh my god, what's happening to me? I can feel everything. The stars, the knowledge of the universe, it's flowing into me. Oh my god. I can see everything from miles and miles around, light years around. The universe is opening up to me. I can see it all. I can see a path home. The hyperspace lanes. Where he goes away. Oh my god. That. Oh, I need a minute. Oh my god. Well, well I mean. Oh god, at least it progged, but. Oh. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, I need a minute. Oh, God. There we go. I can certainly see the light. I've attuned myself to a bright constellation. And... The universe is singing for me. And my game is crashing because I can't have anything nice ever. <laughs> Great. Well, I've come back from the crash and, um... Looks to be inactive again, which I doesn't really bode all that well, but just to make sure that we didn't lose anything, there we go. You see that meter in the top left when I hold my book? That is my level up meter. And basically, because I attuned myself to uh, Vicio, or VCO, or whatever you want to call it, uh, because of that, my level up meter goes up whenever I run around. And I chose that for a specific reason, as did literally everyone else on the internet. And that is that it is exploitable out the backside. So if we go into the book now and click on perks, as you can see, we have a huge perk tree. And as far as I'm aware, you can't actually get all of these. There's a limited amount of perks you can get, but because we started on Root Vicio, we get 10% movement speed, and we gain experience by moving around. If we'd have started on uh, Avitas, we'd have had two extra health, and we'd have got experience by placing down blocks. If we'd started on Avariso, we'd have gotten plus one to reach, and we'd have gathered experience by breaking blocks. If we'd started on Discardia or Dissidia, We'd have had 10% more melee, melee damage and 10% more projectile damage, and we'd have gotten experience by, you know, a dealing damage. And if we'd started on Armara, we'd have gotten 20% more armor, and we'd have gained experience by taking damage, which would have been another good one for us to start on today. But as you can see on the outside, we also have these here. You are unable to grasp the effects of this perk. That's because uh, these, I believe, come from the dark constellations. You see, there's the light constellations, and there's the dark ones. The light ones are the easy ones. The dark ones come a little later. But if we just look through this, so our next choice, um, we have gem sockets here as well. I'm not sure what these do. But our level up choices would be, uh, yeah, we can either get plus 2% added dodge chance or plus 4% increased reach. Then after that, it'd be another reach thing, and then we could either put in a gem socket or we could get swiftness, which would be plus 2% reach, plus 4% movement speed, or agility, which is plus 10% dodge chance, plus 4% movement speed. So for now, let's grab the 4% increased reach. That spends the point. Mm. And how do I get out of this? There we go. And that's that. We just gain more points by filling this meter up by running. Now, as far as I'm aware, it gets harder to fill this meter up the more um, the more points you get. And I'm pretty sure you can get 40 total. So we could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. To be fair, we could get quite a distance in. But uh, I think this is something we're going to have to carefully plan out in between episodes. Because I don't know where to even begin with this sort of stuff. But that aside, let's leave that there before anything else uh, gets destroyed. I'm still really mad that this isn't active despite the fact that we saw it active. And despite the fact that, you know, we used a command to get it to even work down here. Like, if we're gonna cheat to get it to work, the very least it could do is, I don't know, actually just work, you know? But yes, either way, we are gonna end this episode here. Bit of a short one, all things considered, but, I mean, it isn't about the length, darling. It's about how you use it. Uh, but for real, though, yeah, honestly, it, it doesn't matter how long it is. We set a goal, and we completed the goal, for the most part. We did kind of change the goal halfway through, but uh, ignore that. But yeah, we have successfully attuned ourselves to Vich Vichio. We have successfully built an a a a a a uh, celestial gateway. Totally didn't forget the name or anything. We actually finally put one of these rooms to good use. Uh, we do still need to decorate this place a little. It is kind of um, dry, but that will be for another time. So, if you liked this video, make sure to leave a like down below. If you have anything you want to say about this video or anything that happened in the video, leave a comment down below. And if you enjoy me or my content in general, make sure to subscribe. And uh, yeah. In case I don't see you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. See you later, shitlords. Bye-bye!